this is my background technique for um, the swap we are doing at golfspritesartjournal.ning.com thank you Christy for hosting it I got this technique from this book it's a book by Mary Todd Beam this is a Dutch version I have no idea if it's also there in English I guess it is I changed it up a little bit but it's mainly um, uh, the same technique she shows in that book what you need a piece of paper it doesn't really matter what kind of paper as long as it's not too thin you need matte medium glue inks oops salt aluminum foil and water and I use a card to spread the glue around um, and I use this um, piece of board I work on it so I can when it's done easily lift it up and set it aside to dry I let it dry on its own I do not heat dry this you start off with some glue I have some diluted watered down white glue make sure you get the edges so your foil doesn't lift off later that was a little bit too much <laughs> Then your aluminum foil, a little bit bigger or longer or wider <laughs> than your page, and can you see the difference? Yeah, you can see the difference. The sunny, sunny side up. No, it's not an egg. Um, shiny side up, facing you. A little bit crinkly. I put it down, and then. Because the glue is still wet, you can still move it around a little bit and flatten it out. I flip it over to make sure it's all flat. I like to um, fold over the edges, you can tear them off, cut them off, um, whichever way you like. This is for our background swap, so I will be cutting this later into 4 by 6 inch parts. No more bubbles, no more bubbles. First, a thin coat of medium. You can use gloss as well if you like. I like the effect of the matte better because the aluminum foil, of course, is very shiny. And the matte medium tones that down just a little bit, which I like. But you can use gloss when it's, uh, you lose uh, less of the shiny, uh, shininess, I guess you could say, of the foil. All right, thin coat of medium. Then some water. You couldn't see me do that, right? Well, I did. <laughs> then inks. You can use any water soluble ink. I happen to have these, and I love these colors.
then salt. I use ordinary table salt, the finer kind. You can use rock salt, of course, but I like the effect of table salt on this particular background better. Here we go. And that's it. Set it aside to dry. I will see if I can, if I turn this, if you can see better. Well, after it's dried, I'll come back and we'll have to do one more little thing. So set it aside to dry and I'll be back. Hi guys and girls. Here it is. I let it dry overnight. I hope you can see this. <laughs> um, completely dried. And now I'm going to have to cut it into smaller pieces for that little booklet. But you still have some options. You can, if you want to, rub off some of that salt. It gives you, which you can see right now, but I'll hold it up to the camera. I'm hoping you can see this. It gives you these tiny little spots of the aluminum foil that become visible. I just rub it a little bit to get the salt off that is um, already loose. Most of it is really sunk in into the medium and the paint of other inks and the water. Now if you have used an um, Permanent ink, you're done. If you didn't, like I did, I, I used the uh, dilutions. They're not permanent. I'm going to have to um, put some medium on top. Just a thin layer. And it does <coughs> spread around a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. The paint as well, or the inks, but not that much because there's already already medium on there so it already has some sort of fixation but not completely yet that's why I put just a tiny bit of extra medium on top let that dry them. Let's see what happens if I turn off that light. Ooh, that changes the color. <laughs> nope. Oh, these are the, the small pieces I will be sending off. Ooh, I like this one. doesn't have that many folds, then the effect is a bit different. Well, there you go. Hope you liked it. Use it and try it. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.